don't think about health care or insurance until something happens or touches someone. Like I, I had never thought about it because I was born with an invulnerability gene. <laughs> or so I thought. And then um, um, you know, I, I, I sort of experienced things from her perspective and a lot of that internal stuff, I suppose, is somewhat autobiographical. I mean, those ambivalences and, and, and that stuff was material that I, ne you know, you, you never think of that. They don't really portray all that stuff on ER or Grey's Anatomy or something. But I think it's very real, very real. And, it, and the experience made me think of um, the, our healthcare situation as something I, I call, I, I use this phrase, it's like a silent holocaust. I know that's a strong word, but when you add up the number of people who die every year from um, disease and conditions that are amenable to healthcare and you add it up over, you know, 5, 10, 20 years, it, it surpasses the number of people who died in all of our wars. And I use the word silent because when it happens to people, often they become silent because they're so consumed by their own situation, trying to stay afloat, trying to keep their home, all those things. And also it's, it's shameful. There's feelings of shame and, and anger and humiliation. And, and people, I think, turn inward with those feelings. And, and it's a tragedy because it's, it's, it's actually at that time that people need to reach out the most and um, because it's only as a community that we can really um, you know solve these problems so that was a, that was a, the second thing was a, a, a dear friend of mine from drama school uh, was homeless for a couple years and he showed up at the stage door of a theater I was performing at and he um, he uh, had had a schizophrenic, a paranoid schizophrenic episode and ended up living on the streets. And he showed up and when he, when he was there, my immediate response was, I want to help my friend, you know. That's our, that's, our, that's our human response. But then as the weight of the situation started to, uh, to, to become apparent, he had some medical issues. He, he had a slip disc in his neck. He had a giant lump on his arm so I wanted to try to help him get housing but also um, to get in to see a doctor and that was a big eye-opener too. how how difficult uh, how how impossibly difficult that can be trying to navigate of course there are there are things set up to help people but you don't know what they are when you because <laughs> you're not thinking like oh I, where, where will I someday go if my friend is homeless to get him into a doctor. It's not something you think about. And so so that, that was a experience of, uh-oh, he's going to drag me down with him. And so I had those two opposing feelings. And, and that really sort of cracked my heart open a little bit. And, um, and uh, I, I took it on myself to, to do what I could. But it, it raised, raised the question for me, like, why is all of this on my shoulders, <laughs> right? Why, why is it all on me? Why is it all on my credit card? <laughs> um, and so the final thing was I had a gap in my insurance for um, three months, shortly after these other two things came to a head, really. Um, and I... Uh, I started passing kidney stones three weeks into the gap, and I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know what was going on. I was in the middle of a play reading, actually. And I, but it worked. It was a dramatic piece. So I, I actually was offered the role later. But I, think the, I think the director was disappointed in me later. When I was but I, I did what um, I did. You know what a lot of Americans do. I sort of hobbled home and and. Uh, Consulted my personal concierge doctor, WebMD. WebMD is can be a very very harsh diagnostician. Diagnost is that a word? Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, 
So I thought I, I put in the, the symptoms and I, it came back kidney failure. That's what I thought was going on. So, so I, the next Google search was how much is it going to cost me to go to the emergency room? That came back like eight thousand dollars, right? So I did. I did what we as Americans are trained to do. I did the cost-benefit analysis. Right? So, uh, let's see: five percent chance mortality, uh, two to three days kidney failure on the one hand, or a hundred percent chance of eight thousand dollars. So I stayed home and took Advil and Tylenol. And, um, but as as that happened, I. And it, you know, passed, and but that, that made me think, like, ah, this is what it's like. This is what it's like for someone who, or, or what, what, what would it be like if it was an ongoing thing, you know, or if it was more serious? Kidney stones is not serious, and it made me realize that in addition to the physical suffering and challenges people have, there's an equal or maybe even greater dose in some cases of kind of emotional and existential anguish of the feeling of being all alone, you know, being left behind. And, and that was something that I really wanted to articulate in this piece. You know, this guy's ultimately feeling like he's all alone against 